the Alpha Fly Next Percent from Nike, at least for the moment, is the most expensive running shoe that you can buy. How does it hold up against some of the other top end models? Is it still the best that money can buy? Thanks for tuning in cats, it's always appreciated. Help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button and the bell below for notifications. Also give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. The Alpha Fly Next Percent from Nike, a shoe of peculiar propulsion and almost endless energy return. That's about 85% apparently. It certainly costs a pretty penny people, but does it deliver for those extra earth credits? Is it still the best running shoe that money can buy? On today's video, I'm gonna compare it up against some of the other very expensive running shoes that you can buy right now, and see if this one is still the top dog. Does it still deliver the best performance? Or have some of the others caught up? Over here in the UK, this one retails for 270 pounds right now, which is eye-watering. So one of the closest in terms of price right now is the Adidas Adi Zero Prime X. This one clocks in at 220 Earth credits here in the UK, so it's close to the Alpha Fly retail price, but it's still a way off. It towers over the Nike shoe, making even the Alpha Fly seem quite modest, really. The Alpha Fly does have quite a bit more width, though, in both the midfoot and the heel area. I'd suggest, though, that the upper on the Primax is by far more comfortable than Nike's shoe. The upper really is a glove, whereas the strange mesh on the Alpha Fly probably isn't really that natural to most people. With all that extra midsole stack and extra foam, you do get some extra weight here in the Primax. It's quite noticeably heavier than the Alpha Fly. If we're talking racing here, then I would absolutely say the Alpha Fly is the better shoe of the two. It does have the upper hand for that, though I would suggest that both shoes significantly reduce the amount of fatigue that you're gonna feel, and they both lessen the effort even at easier paces. I went back through Strava looking at various different runs between the two shoes, and they're certainly probably the best in terms of lessening effort. The heart rates are that bit lower, even on some very long runs. I think that they lessen fatigue in the legs by a small amount, and that also lessens the amount of stress that you feel while you're running. I think it has this kind of cumulative effect, really. Lots of very small advantages, small little performance boosts here and there to various different things, and they all add up. I think the most telling run there was probably a 14 mile effort, around about eight minutes, three seconds per mile, with a heart rate of only 133 beats per minute, along with a seven mile effort where I think the average pace was about eight minutes per mile and a heart rate of 128 beats per minute. Now it's quite ridiculous really if you're looking at easy runs and training, and certainly the Prime X and the Alpha Fly really do work. I think with the lower weight of the Alpha Fly and the current reduced discounted prices, just prior to when the second version comes out, it makes it a bit of a steal right now over the Prime X. But if we're talking full retail price, is it worth the extra? Probably not. I still regard the Adidas Prime X as the better shoe to use in training and for longer runs. I think it's the best trainer out of the two, whereas the Alpha Fly is probably the best race shoe. Next up, the Alpha Fly versus the Metaspeed Sky Plus from ASICS. I think this comparison's probably closer than you expect. Got a bit of a weight difference here between the two shoes, with the ASICs being by far the lighter. I think you've certainly got a more natural feeling upper here in the ASICs shoe compared to the Alpha Fly, and perhaps a ride that's a little bit more reminiscent of a regular running shoe than Nike's technological terror. I think the upper fit's a little bit more familiar here in the ASICs. You haven't got that very rigid and kind of firm mesh. It's floppy and flexible here. I think it will appeal to a wider range of runners. You could probably use it a little bit more than the Alpha Fly. That to me feels like a longer run shoe. This one you can probably do some five or 10K racing in. Half marathon too, no problem. I mean, I've liked using the Alpha Fly for seven to 10 mile efforts as well. Don't get me wrong. I just love it for its fatigue lessening properties. Feels a little bit more like a sports car, this one compared to a Volvo. I can see people picking this one up and being able to race some 5 to 10k and half marathon events. Feels nimble, it feels light and nippy on foot. Though I still think the Alpha Fly has got an advantage the further you go. We saw that in the results of a viewer poll last year. Loads and loads of people came out the woodwork and really loved the Alpha Fly for those distance efforts. I think the drop between the shoes isn't all that noticeable now, certainly the plate 
position and the curve is very very similar here between the two shoes that was what i felt actually when i first started running in this shoe it does feel a little bit more like the alpha fly compared to the vapor fly next percent i think the level of compression is not all that dissimilar now between the two shoes but i think so many people find the alpha fly just far too tight in the arch that drifts away from me when i start running in it but i think a lot of people still feel that and just can't get on with the shoe i've not experienced that over many many miles but i think recently this one's certainly feeling a little bit more natural to me at least for my purposes anyway i'm more of a half marathon man than a marathon man but if i was going to run one it'd probably be in the alpha fly on to the next wallet smasher I don't think we can continue with this video unless we include the Adios Pro 3. That one seems like it's going to drop relatively soon. Very exciting. One thing that's not quite so exciting about it is that Adidas seem to have pushed the price up by about £40 here in the UK from the Adios Pro 2 price. Come on, Adidas, what's that all about? Seems to be just about the same amount of shoe, but more money i did check up on the adidas website as to the weight of that one it says it's 215 grams which is the same as the adios pro 2 although they have amended the heel and forefoot midsole stack heights now it says 39.5 in the heel and 33 in the forefoot so it might be a bit of a change in terms of the stack and the drop though one of the other websites reckons it's 31 in the forefoot so who knows maybe the intern's been at the adidas website again the shoe appears to be a refinement of the adios pro 2 which in my size was round about the same weight as the alpha fly i found the adios pro 2 upper pretty much spot on really as per all the other adidas adi zero shoes of recent time and i hope the upper on the v3 will be just as good as the others when it drops here in the uk a little perplex as to the price increase it brings it in line with the prime x is it going to be that much better than the adios pro 2 is it going to be that much better than the prime x i'm not sure but 220 pounds is a lot of cash it's going to have to be a huge step forward to justify that huge price increase i think as such the alpha fly at the moment provides the better value here I can't believe I'm saying that, but it does. It's a tried and tested beast by many runners over many miles. I think that £40 price increase is just not cricket really, is it? Lastly, on today's video, we're going to compare the Alpha Fly up against the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2. Here's the old Proto Edition. It stood up to the test of time very well, actually. But what does the Alpha Fly bring to the table that this doesn't do already in a lighter and cheaper package? Lighter than the Alpha Fly, cheaper by £40 here in the UK. And there's many a runner who prefers the Vaporfly Next% Percent when compared to the Alpha Fly. Perhaps it's the heel to toe drop, perhaps it's the plate placement, but it still certainly appears to be the top dog over the alpha fly go to any local race you see way more of these than you do the alpha fly is it worth paying the extra money over the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2 what do you get I mean on a quality level they're probably produced about the same and in terms of Nike shoes that's changeable it's certainly not consistent both shoes have some faults the Vaporfly Next% Percent, for example just seems to have the softest rubber compound known to man and you're going to get creasing all across that midsole straight out the box. If that worries you and it troubles you, don't buy the shoe. I mean, is any running shoe worth over £200? Well, no, it's not really, is it? I mean, some of the materials are recycled plastic bottles and some of them feel like the packaging used to protect a fridge freezer. In 2022, you've got like 10 colorways of this shoe that you can go for. Back in 2019, there was like one or two. And if you manage to get a pair, you're really lucky. Now they're one a penny, two a penny everywhere. I think worth and value are always in the eye of the beholder. Someone might love the shoe and they'd quite happily pay double for it. But I think things are starting to get a little crazy. Personally, for me, I think this has a little bit of an edge over the Alpha Fly. Certainly for my running form and what I want to get out of running right now. It's an acquired taste, this shoe. It really is. Not everybody's going to get on with it. So is it the best running shoe that money can buy? Actually, I don't think it is. I think if I had to have one shoe to run in right now, it would probably be the Metaspeed Sky Plus. That does everything for me and it does it very well. What are your thoughts and opinions on this one, guys? Is the Alpha Fly really the Gillette of running shoes? Is it the best a runner can get? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Musical interlude time. I've recently become really obsessed with a track by The Strokes from their April 2020 album, 
the new abnormal the last track on the album is called ode to the mets and it's just fantastic i love everything about it it's got this kind of old very sentimental style melody it kind of loops up around itself fantastic simple drums loads of different sections to the song and an absolutely stellar performance on the vocals by julian casablancas there's some absolutely wonderful guitar playing on this track the two guitars sort of intertwine together the bass lays down the foundation and the video appear to be about the sort of city submerged you know, you've got the mets baseball stadium there completely submerged in water it just stirs all these different sorts of emotions and certainly that part towards the end where he's talking about friends long forgotten it really does stir some interesting odd feelings inside myself what a wonderful track i think that album's a little bit overlooked as well when it came out people didn't really pay too much attention to it because of obvious things that were going on in the world at that point but i think now people are dipping back into it and realizing just how great an album it is ode to the mets from the new abnormal by the strokes thanks for tuning in people always appreciated help the channel out by becoming a member you can hit that join button below and browse the perks that are available hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies my name's ed bird and I'll be seeing you.